Welcome to this year's ATM uh, virtual interviews before the show uh, in Dubai. And I'm delighted to say that uh, the guest we have with us today is none other than Gaith El Gate, CEO of Fly Dubai. Gaith, welcome to the session today. Hey, hi, John. It's nice to be with you again. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, face to face uh, in Dubai in a few weeks' time at, at the show, of course. Gaith, let's kick off by, by taking a reflection over the last year. Of course, we've, we've dealt with two years of a challenge of COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think we saw a change in dynamics and maybe an improving trend in the last year, uh, both for Dubai as a destination and for Fly Dubai as an airline. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how, how the last year was and what, what sort of uh, uh, evolution you saw taking place? Well, uh, I mean, last year, of course, it was tough uh, for, uh, for 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 everybody, uh, and uh, you, you, you know we've um, had the second year of uh, of the COVID. Um, uh, luckily for us, uh, in the United Arab Emirates and in Dubai, um, uh, especially, we uh, have started uh, welcoming people back. Uh, probably uh, six to nine months uh, prior to the start of the year. Uh, uh, we really had uh, a very, I would say, steady way of uh, dealing uh, with bringing people back. And better uh, prior, uh, how our government uh, has dealt with the pandemic, we really had uh, a very uh, good, uh, successful, effective uh, way of dealing with the pandemic in, in, in the United Arab Emirates. So uh, when the year started, we were ready to even welcome more people. The only uh, problem was, uh, you know, the, uh, the reappearance of uh, COVID in certain places and the cancellations or the restrictions uh, being applied. Uh, so the more uh, restriction uh, were uh, re- reduced, uh, the more places uh, we could fly or flow to, and um, uh, more people could have visited Dubai. Uh, and also in that year, uh, we were also fortunate enough uh, to have our beloved Max back in April. So starting from April onward. Uh, we uh, welcome back our MAX and we uh, had, uh, of course, 14 aircraft grounded uh, at that time. And we also made a decision uh, with the return of the MAX that we had to ramp up uh, our uh, um, in, uh, introduction of new aircraft uh, of the MAX. So we've, uh, we've taken, uh, we were planning to take uh, about maybe 12 or 13 of them at, uh, that year. Eventually, we managed to get only 11, mainly due to the um, restriction of actually delivery of aircraft. So we, we've taken 11 new aircraft. So the scene was set uh, for uh, very strong growth. And uh, coupled with the fact that uh, the United Arab Emirates and Dubai was welcoming people uh, to, 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 to travel, that really gave us a boost. So starting uh, in, in, in the summer of 2021, uh, the United Arab Emirates resident and uh, and um, and uh, citizen or citizens uh, they were allowed to go to a lots of countries. Or uh, uh, so we made sure that uh, our schedule reflected all the places that they can go to. So we, we've introduced we introduced uh, a, a lots of uh, summer destinations like Mykonos, Bedrom in 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 Turkey. And uh, so that it really gave us uh, a good boost. All in all, so, sounds like it was a very good start. To, sounds like a very good start, Gave. And I, I just wanted to uh, draw you out on a couple of points and, and then come back to a couple. Uh, I mean, as you said, Dubai itself was very um, welcoming and open and careful. And uh, uh, as you know, I came down for my first visit in the autumn and saw that, and it certainly felt very secure, but at the same time also, you could relax and enjoy being there. Uh, I guess also you had the, um, the Expo 2020, which uh, I also was lucky enough to visit. That must have boosted not only visitors for Dubai, but also for you from many places where people could travel. Okay, absolutely. Actually, that was my punchline. You, ah, you, still, sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, the Expo, has been wonderful. Uh, 
I, 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 you know, uh, it's really act, uh, activated the imagination of all of the people in the country. Everybody supported it. And we had people coming from all over the world. I mean, to have beaten the record of, of the 20 uh, plus million that were targeted is, is a huge accomplishment. And we really felt that uh, in terms of the visitors and the bookings and the business that we have seen and, um, and the, the, uh, the, the Expo, beauty of Expo is not what Expo have done for us now, is what Expo will do for, for the country in the immediate future and the, for the, in the long term. So that's definitely something that would uh, help us uh, in the future as much as it also helped us during the 21 uh, season. So I was just gonna add uh, on, for, on that also, that that year we've we've launched um, uh, we've taken uh, as I said 11 air aircraft and we launched 22 new destinations uh, in the whole of the year and for us the, the the point was we have been agile enough as a as a company to be able to react uh, to uh, the, the changes and uh, quick enough to add capacity. And that's what uh, was uh, the main reason that uh, we were successful. But the big reason was the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, and Expo. Absolutely. Yeah, certainly a much more encouraging uh, outlook uh, as we see right now. And I think what you said there, Gaith, in terms of that development, reflected in your results, because like everybody, you had lost money in the previous year, like every airline around the world, but you returned to a significant level of profitability. And that was in a year when, as you said, you were simply, you were developing new traffic, you were getting the max back in the service, but the profit was, if I'm not mistaken, $229 million, which is a significant figure. Yes, uh, for, for us, uh, this was uh, uh, our best result ever. And again, you know, the, the, the main factor, I, uh, as I explained, especially on the uh, last half of the year and the last quarter, uh, you, you, you know, we saw a uh, number of uh, flights. Actually, by December, uh, December of 2021, we were actually operating uh, thirteen uh, percent more uh, flights than we were doing prior to the COVID, uh, and then also we had a healthy loads, and the, the yield also was very strong. So, uh, so this is where uh, uh, it was reflected on our uh, profit, and the main things, as I said, the UAE to buy Expo. Yes, as, as you said, I noticed that your, your load factors were going in the right direction, up close to 70%, and uh, even average prices, people seem to be willing to pay more to travel. And uh, did you, would you say you really experienced a lot of pent up demand? You, you talked about you know, the, the population of Dubai, which of course is very diverse. People wanted to travel. I guess that really was a major boost. People couldn't wait to get traveling out of the country as well as tourists coming in. For sure, uh, in, in the summer uh, of 2021, it was the, uh, the pent up demand uh, in, of the UAE uh, travelers who wanted to travel. And then in, in, the, in the winter, all of these people who wanted to visit the UAE, there is a huge pent up demand. And uh, Dubai was uh, the only show in town. And, uh, and that uh, what really uh, helped drive the, the traffic. If, uh, if you were here with us in Dubai, you would have seen most of the hotels had record numbers of, of guests uh, and revenue for the year. And this is why, you know, it gives us confidence that uh, our uh, location, the United Arab Emirates and Dubai, is coming up uh, to a huge expansion. And uh, with the Expo uh, promoting the country, I, I, I think looking forward uh, for uh, this year, which we already had the uh, first few months passed. It's very, very, very strong. And uh, I think the rest of the year and uh, the next few years, the United Arab Emirates and Dubai will be very strong. And, and Dubai has, has proved itself to be resilient over a number of uh, different challenges which we've seen uh, around the world, sadly, in the last few years. But right now, of course, we have two challenges again. Uh, we already had seen that fuel prices were were on the rise over, over quite some period of uh, last year, and that's something you can't avoid as a cost. And now we have, uh, uh, although COVID itself is not by any means completely over, we also have a, a challenge of a geopolitical situation uh, 
in, in Ukraine. How can you just give us some flavour on how both of those two elements affect you? Uh, uh, fuel is a, a, an obvious one, but in terms of network and routing, it's with regard to the uh, the conflict situation. Well, uh, with the, with regard to the fuel, it, it's a huge problem, and mm -hmm. especially. Um, the fact that this uh, happened so suddenly and uh, you, you could not even uh, react and hedge. And uh, now, of course, you can hedge, but it becomes very vulnerable. Uh, you, you, you never know if the price is going to go down and uh, it's difficult to, uh, a call to make. And uh, if it's maintained for a long time, it would really be uh, very negative, uh, not only for us, uh, but uh, for, for, for the rest of the world because uh, it will rise inflation and definitely uh, it's always um, people would save uh, the money that they don't have to spend and sometimes not everybody wants to travel or can afford to travel so that's uh, moving forward will be a huge issue for us the geopolitical uh, issues is also uh, of course affects us you, you know we have lived in a region that always experiment uh, geopolitical issue this one is a little bit uh, worse because it's, it's huge. And uh, we pray that it will uh, uh, be resolved uh, very soon. It had, of course, an advert effect on all of us. Now, we certainly all hope that uh, we get a, a, a calm solution to that as soon as possible. Just want to reflect back, given that nature challenge that you describe, uh, particularly with fuel prices, and you mentioned already the, the, the mm -hmm. successful return to service of the MAX. Tell me a bit more on the MAX. Number number one, it's a more fuel efficient aircraft. So it must be in some ways a, a relief, at least to have that aircraft uh, coming in now, uh, being able to carry um, passengers at, at a more economic cost. And, and tell us also about the, the ability to bring that in with confidence with your own team and passenger acceptance of the MAX. Well, first of all, the, the, the MAX, yes, uh, we've already seen the double digit uh, percentage improvement in efficiencies uh, of fuel and as you rightly said john it really now it's the best time to to have the max and that's why you know our decision was to to, to get as many aircraft as possible we've got 11 last year and uh, in this year we are getting um, something like uh, 23 of them uh, new uh, into the system so we are uh, very uh, comfortable very proud of that the uh, issue with the max grounding and the way it has been dealt with comprehensively by uh, not, not only Boeing, by all the authorities all over the world, it has given uh, a lot of people confident that this aircraft has been over uh, now uh, regulated in terms of uh, checking. So uh, we experience very little on one uh, advert reaction from people uh, for the max coming back um, and uh, for the max also it's um, it hosts our new look and feel for the airline so we we have the new business class and economy class the flatbed in in business class which we actually were missing for two years so to have that back and be able uh, to showcase it to our customer has been uh, a big success for us. Uh, we've been getting a lot of big reviews. Actually, uh, John, a lot of people will say, ah, is this flight the max? I want to take that flight uh, because of the product that we have uh, on, on board. That's interesting. And that, that makes me think of another, another question I have for you, Gabe. I mean, you, you introduced that uh, uh, flatbed business class concept, uh, even on the 800s, and as you said, improved and new seating on, on the maxes. Uh, I've often debated with you and your team, you know, uh, is this the right thing to have uh, uh, a, a fixed cabin business class product and of a very high quality? But what I saw also in your reporting in the last year is enormous increases in take up of a business class product, in particular markets around the network. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I wonder if that's something you expect to continue for the future, because one thing that's come out of COVID is more people are concerned about space on flights, not, not just from a comfort point of view, but just wanted to feel that sense of space for people when traveling. Uh, what, what is your feeling about that uh, for the business? No, definitely, class definitely uh, you, you know, because of COVID, you, you, you have to understand 
or you have to take all the results that you currently see and try to uh, pick them in part and then decide, ah, is this is a one-off things? I mean, when you said the yield is high because there's shortage of capacity, because uh, high load uh, in business class, yes, people are now trying to utilize uh, more space to, to feel more comfortable. So we are, we are trying to uh, get uh, to the bottom of that and understand, is this a permanent thing uh, th th that we are seeing? But we believe uh, very confidently uh, in the product because uh, of the fact that it is so good versus what we had before. And um, we, we, should not, uh, we should remember also in the United Arab Emirates and the complexity of the people that we serve across the nation, across our region, they actually, there is a, a good business class uh, load. Also, we should uh, also say that uh, our um, code share arrangement to, with Emirates, uh, with this kind of uh, product, we, are, we close the gap as far as the uh, product concern uh, between uh, the Emirates and, uh, and our gap. Still, there is a gap, but not as much as it used to be. Uh, so, so this also give, gives us another dimension. Uh, and it has been also a good dimension for our business. Actually, on, on that front, um, uh, the rapid growth that we have seen, we are actually now experimenting uh, numbers uh, even better uh, than what we had uh, on the code share uh, before the, the, the COVID situation. So, uh, so that's another positive uh, bit of news, yeah. Yeah, and I, I wanted to ask you about that. And uh, effectively, you, you uh, confirmed that that partnership is still growing strongly. Uh, and as you say, you can match the product uh, at the premium end as well as uh, in the economy CTM. Not match, uh, not match the product completely, close the gap. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And another factor in terms of the business class, uh, which maybe it's easy for, for, for somebody like myself uh, here in, in Europe to forget, M many uh, airlines. Uh, flying out at narrow bodied aircraft in Europe are flying them on maybe one or two hour flights. I mean, you have those flights, but a lot of your flights are, are four, five hours in length. And indeed, you've got more capability to go far now with the MAX. So the longer you fly, the more uh, business class is appreciated by, by many passengers as well. Absolutely. And just a, a question in terms of coming back to full strength and, and future growth, uh, Gave. And again, I'm coming from something I see happening a lot. Uh, here in the European market currently. Many airlines and indeed airports are struggling to get staff back on board. Uh, we've seen a lot of media coverage uh, of airports, for example, in the UK and other parts of Europe with big queues of people, uh, airlines having to cancel flights because uh, they've either not been able to recruit uh, enough people to, to, to meet the demand and COVID has crept in with the current variant uh, causing higher sickness. How have you managed there? Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, you already tried to keep more of your team on board, as many as you could, even in the most difficult times. Is it, has it been easier for you or is that a, a challenge you're also having to navigate? No, we are, uh, we, we've managed well. I mean, um, the first uh, issue we did well uh, for, uh, for keeping our staff, actually, John, mm -hmm. Uh, when this uh, COVID happened, uh, we put to, on the table uh, an offer for the people who unfortunately we had to uh, do uh, without uh, in the beginning of the COVID. So the, the option was to re receive whatever settlement uh, is contractually uh, applicable to them and an option uh, for them to, re to remain uh, part of Fly Dubai and take uh, an unpaid leave uh, for, uh, for a year and uh, of course extended to an extra year and we would pay their insurance tickets to go back home and then they can stay in Dubai uh, if they wanted and even if they find a job we had no issue with that. We were very uh, very uh, happy, uh, surprised that 97% uh, of the people actually took uh, that, uh, that uh, unpaid leave. So what we had, we had lots of people who continue to be on our paycheck or on our, actively our staff. So to bring them back, it was very, very easy. And because uh, we had a plan as a company uh, to uh, take so many aircraft, as I mentioned before, 11 last year, 23 this year, we already know that there are incoming uh, uh, flights. So we had to uh, start recruiting process earlier 
And the third point is that the success of the United Arab Emirates dealing with the pandemic and Dubai especially, everybody now wants to come and uh, live in the United Arab Emirates and work uh, for, uh, for us. Uh, and uh, so we had no problem at all. I, am, uh, I can confidently say we have not canceled or delayed a launch of any flight now and in the near future because of shortages of staff. That's a really positive position to be in and uh, mm -hmm. foresighted uh, to, to take that approach that you did to uh, maximize the number of people still uh, around and now coming back. Uh, if we look also a bit further ahead, Gaith, in terms of growth, you're going to go beyond the fleet of, I think, around about 60 aircraft you have now. You had a big order, which you slightly revised down, but you still have a big order book uh, ahead. Um, do you envisage you know, broadening the reach of uh, Fly Dubai to maybe markets not yet uh, tried? And again, particularly thinking that the MAX can fly uh, with a full load quite a bit further than the 800s could. Well, we, uh, we have the Dash 10 uh, that, that we can still uh, deploy. And we continue to look at uh, uh, other aircraft and what is available. Uh, you, you know, we are in a very unique position where we can actually uh, take more aircraft because by adjusting our uh, order book uh, in the near future, now we have the opportunity to take even more aircraft. We're trying to, uh, to understand what's available. And um, as far as uh, the demand is concerned, I, I think if we can live uh, off the uh, existing uh, network uh, range, uh, with the kind of demand uh, that we feel uh, is, is coming uh, for the United Arab Emirates and, and Dubai, we will be all right. We don't have to really go further, honestly, uh, because um, as I said, the United Arab Emirates and Dubai will become more and more uh, popular and, uh, and, and this is will strengthen our, uh, our business. Our business is always stronger when we are carrying point to point business our business is always stronger when we don't have to fly uh, longer distance. Uh, you know, the shorter, the better, because the aircraft are more efficient. Absolutely, that makes sense. And you mentioned, I mean, even the network as it stands, you talked about the, the, quite a substantial number of new routes that you launched last summer. And you know, many airlines talk about agility uh, and there's been a lot more testing and entrepreneurship. I, I find it interesting that you launched uh, as you said, a number of new destinations into Europe, like Santorini, and not one I would have imagined. And now you're going to start, for example, Pisa uh, this summer. Uh, I found that a very interesting development, but uh, it is really uh, a dynamic approach to um, using those very important yeah, I mean, as I said, you, you uh, is one of uh, the few people who've lived uh, through uh, the evolution of the product of Dubai. And I can uh, tell you now that as far as attracting uh, visitors to Dubai, now you are looking at the pizza of this world, the smaller uh, secondary cities, and they are all real. I mean, this is not the first time we have taken the secondary airport uh, and, and flown them in Europe. And uh, they will be more of these cities uh, available or uh, can be served by us because they will be more attractive uh, for business uh, from Dubai. And then the Dubai population, you know, the more it, uh, it increases, uh, and uh, we have a very strong mid-class uh, residents who would take uh, trips uh, more often than uh, the other end of the scale of the, of the type of people who live in the country, more people will travel. And that's why, you know, uh, we can feel that many secondary airports in Europe and in the region, uh, when open, they will be attractive to connect to Dubai. Oh, absolutely. And you, you mentioned also about extending population in Dubai. I was going to ask you about uh, DWC, Dubai World Central. You're going to be using the airport, uh, transferring some routes this summer as, as the runway maintenance work uh, gets underway again at uh, Dubai International. But uh, one thing that struck me when I was out uh, in the autumn with visiting you and visiting the air show and getting on the metro, uh, watching from the metro, going out 
to the expo uh, as someone who has seen Dubai from the outside over many years I was getting confused about what I was seeing because I could see more urban centers and I thought well this isn't Dubai where's this and then I think oh, this is Dubai Marina and then of course you now have Dubai South developing so for people who are maybe not so familiar uh, with Dubai as you said it's, it's really developing in geography and population and that second airport is going to be uh, more and more important to, to the country and indeed to your development I would imagine for the future. No for sure for sure the, uh, the, the Dubai growth in terms of population and geography is is moving uh, toward uh, the south of the city and uh, I mean I am of course born lived in, in Dubai sometime uh, when I go to that part of Dubai, thank God for Google. I would not know how to monitor, uh, see, uh, drive around, uh, and it is growing very much. And that's why you know um, the Al Maktoum Airport. Uh, it will be very important for us in the future, and it will be part of our growth strategy. Absolutely. And in terms of the product style uh, on board and surrounding the onboard product, uh, any new developments that you're planning there, Gaith? I mean, what one thing you already use is quite a lot of digital in terms of uh, passengers being able to buy products and in flight entertainment and so on. Well, you, you, you know, our biggest uh, development, as I said, we are getting more of the max, so the aircraft will be a better comfort. We are flying to many new destinations, so we are uh, giving the people. Uh, uh, more exciting places uh, to to go to, and uh, continuing, you, you, you know, the service that uh, we try hopefully to to represent the Fly Dubai brand uh, and giving the people experience to connect them with places that they probably never thought that they can fly to. Absolutely, and just looking more broadly, uh, Gaith, uh, just if you could give us your, your reflections on the, the state of the industry you know, coming out of uh, COVID, hopefully uh, the challenge, as we already said, the backdrop of the uh, geopolitical tensions, which is not something unfamiliar in, in the Gulf region. How do you see the industry progressing? Do you think we're going to see more consolidation, different business models, uh, and, and what might that mean for, for us all for the future of air travel? Well, again, you, you, you know, I'm very optimistic uh, about the future and especially the nearby future because we can see the bounce, the bounce back and then the return of the traffic. Still, uh, I think we have to be very realistic. We don't know uh, how COVID uh, would change uh, people uh, thinking. You know, we had that session during the um, Dubai Air Show uh, about how people will be and uh, are they going to be traveling again and is business class or the business travel will go away? We still don't know that. So we have to be very careful. And I think the biggest concern that we have right now, the rising fuel cost, I think that's definitely going to affect the business and will affect the money disposable income that people have to travel. So that will be a huge dent in the projection for the future, uh, as we saw it a few months ago, and uh, we'll have to keep, uh, watch uh, what will happen in the next uh, few months to see how long this will affect us. If it is a long term, uh, if it stays for longer term, definitely uh, this will affect the, the, the business uh, adversely, and that uh, maybe some companies will need to consolidate uh, and go out of business because for this type uh, of fuel prices, it's not it's not sustainable. No, certainly, it's a, a, a big and unknown uh, uh, scale of challenge, isn't it? That we have to manage. Gaither, okay, we, we do just have a short time today for this particular uh, conversation, so I'd just like to uh, close it by asking you just a couple of personal reflections. And I think I've asked you something about this before. I mean, you have uh, been with Fly Dubai uh, as its leader since inception. We've talked before about several challenges that you, you've had to face. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are your reflections at this point in time about uh, um, meeting challenges. I mean, you've just won CEO of the Year Award. I should congratulate you on that. And perhaps that is partly reflecting, uh, if not significantly, the fact you have had to get through challenges and you've managed to do it successfully. Are you, are you ready and uh, um, willing is perhaps not the right word. I know you're willing, uh, realistic about facing more challenges in the future. 
Yes, you know, without challenges, somehow it's fuel our uh, our ability. And all of the success that we had is that because you go through these challenges, you learn from them. And uh, you, you, you know, we live in a place it's continuously developing and evolving. So for, for us, it is always a pleasure to serve and a pleasure to work. And the thing that makes us uh, more, more successful is the team that, 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 that we have. I am uh, proudly uh, now part of a team in Fly Dubai, core business and staff that have been together for the last 13, 14 years. And it is that togetherness that we have that uh, gives us the, the, the ability to face any challenges. Uh, and uh, nobody wishes uh, to uh, face a worse situation. But I, I think based on our experience and the team that we have, we are up to any challenges uh, God may throw at us. Well, it's very good to hear, Gaith, and, and I'm not at all surprised uh, having got to know you over these years. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. It's been both interesting and insightful, and it, I, I'm always uh, enthused to watch the progress of Fly Dubai, which you lead. I look forward to seeing you in person at the ATM this year. So thank you very much today, Gaith O'Gay, CEO of Fly Dubai, and thanks very much to all of you who've uh, watched the session. That's over and out for me, John Strickland. Thanks a lot. Thank you, John.